Hi, my name is Luke Spangenberg. I'm the director of the Biofuel Centers of Excellence at Santa Fe Community College. And we're here to talk today about scaling up in photobioreactors, different methods, different materials. Typically in a lab, as you were scaling up in your other program, you went from small scale to little larger systems and you used a magnetic stirrer, keeping it in your laboratory. Well, when you get to the point where you actually have to scale up and things start to change after one liter, you have an option, you can move into glass, which is a typical laboratory thing to do. You need an air stone, you need an air hose for proper mixing. Or at that point, you can actually transfer into some of these alternative materials, plastics. This is a plastic that has a UV filter in it to let this light spectrum in. It's very good for outdoor production and it has a longevity on the tube. So one of the things to think about as you scale up, glass is forever, but those other materials have a lifespan on them. So you need to think about that as you're scaling up and that return on investment for materials. Many algae operations in their laboratory scale up from this phase and they use what's called a carboy. And the carboy is quite effective. They're up to about 20 liters, but they use artificial light and they keep it in their laboratory as they start to scale up that culture because you need enough seed stock to get into a commercial production. So another alternative to using this equipment is scaling from here to something like this. And we use a company called New Solutions Energy that provides our reactor systems here that they're developing. So the advantage of, the, of this material for us is with students, it's a full drain system, it's easy to clean, they can assemble it, they can manufacture them here. This is um, a more traditional method. Then they could also alternatively scale up using plastic bags. Some of the industry's been quite successful with that. There's a variety of sizes and gauges. As you see, this is a eight inch tube here. And then you have a 10 inch tube. So you can alternatively not use one of the hard plastic materials, use a soft plastic. Here's a clear version for producing inside. The reason this is green is it has a UV filter in it. All of these little small parts that you see on these plastic reactors are available off the shelf. And uh, once you start scaling up to the point of eight, 10, and 12 inch, it is an industrial process. Building small systems that are four inches or six inches are quite simple. So here at the school, we, we try and give them some experience handling the big pieces of equipment and properly doing it so they get some plumbing skills as well. These systems are up to 13 liters and you start with your culture in here. It's very easy to operate. You add your media, you scale up. When it gets to a certain density, you can split and start to grow larger cultures. We have two different cultures growing here. This is a saltwater strain right here. This is a freshwater strain. The nice thing about having these reactors at scale, we have replicates, so we always have feedstock to work with to scale up. So typically we go from here, it gets to a density that we're happy with as we scale up. Then we can move over to this system here. So we're scaling up now from 10 liters to 100 liters, from the small system to the large systems. This is a eight inch tube, full drain on the bottom, very easy for us to keep clean and maintain. It has air mixing in it. When we scale up from this point, now we have a very simple system in triplicate that we can start to scale up to get to a larger volume to charge the larger photobioreactor. 